This video was brought to you by Elbilmerk, a bedroom planner, storing by Ken Power and Bill Componenter. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna range test a mini Countryman. This has the same battery and drivetrain as the BMW iX1 and iX2. So, oh, no, no. Okay. Uh, that happens because I have the OBD connected. Yeah, you see the OBD is there. And then as long as the car is locked, then it's like, oh, safety issue, safety issue. Okay. But this is, uh, I mean, there's a mini after all. Look how little space we have in the back. Normally when I do my shots here, I will have uh, the seat, uh, uh, the passenger seat, adjusted all the way back so I have place for the cameras, right? And then we have this tiny space here. So I guess the back seats, they actually work for a passenger in the back without legs. Yeah. And what about the trunk? I think I haven't even checked the trunk just since I pick up the car. Well, at least the trunk seems decent. So this is, uh, well, actually the name is called Mini Countryman SE All 4. So it's the all-wheel drive. Yeah. So let me show you what is also weird about this Mini, which is that I mean, you have a round steering wheel, so why don't you also have a round screen? It is freaking round. It's not squared. <laughs> uh, it is so weird how I use this screen. Like, map, map looks like this. It's round, of course. Everything is round. The moon is round. The, the planet is round. So why not have a round screen? What about music player? Uh, huh? Okay, whatever. Uh, let me see. So it's kind of complicated. There's a, and also there's no instrument cluster here. There is a head-up display, a poor man head-up display. So I have to then go, uh, let me see how's it, oh, there's a power switch. There, car is on now. <laughs> uh, I have to go here and then, uh, no, like here, and then I scroll down. Wait, 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 I was up earlier, okay. Um, I have to find journey data. Wow, seriously. Yeah, so here we have, no, no, what the heck? Wow, oh, the odometer is 6,666 kilometers, yeah. Okay, but um, I just re I set the car to English, but it seems to restart every time. I have to create a profile, but I mean, most press cars I test, I'm like in and out in them, right? I don't have time to create a profile and user for every press car, but uh, this car resets the language. Okay, we're just gonna have Norwegian then. Yeah, so uh, we have some trip meters here. Wait, how is this good? Huh? Huh? What is this Unreal Engine? Okay, no, but uh, we have there, 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 there. there. It's, it's not obvious where you can press, right? Yeah, so we have different uh, trip here. See, this looks like BMW. These buttons here look like BMW here also. And they have elements that look like BMW in many places. Uh, but did you know you can press here? Yeah, you know, what about here? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Here, you can press here, supposedly. Yeah. Uh, here. This is so weird, man. Yeah, okay, look at me. Okay, whatever. Let's, let's just reset and start going. Okay, let's check the weight. Front axle, all right. The whole car. Well, exactly the same as the BMW. Alright, we're on the move. And this time we have to cruise at 124. What, can you see it there? See it here? 124, I'm not sure. It's claimed 109. Huh, really? Do you have to go 125? Uh, okay, 125 then. So yeah, this is interesting. You have uh, some uh, driving data here along with the instrument. I mean with the uh, head of display because I guess you're going to turn off the head of display. So uh, it's like uh, Tesla style, you know, to have a speed speedometer and, and some crucial driving info here also. So yeah, now we just see. Uh, today we have nice weather. And wait, what was the temperature? Where do I see the temperature here? It's down there, 13 degrees Celsius. Yeah, winter is coming. It's getting colder and colder now. So and then, what, man, if you want to see the consumption, I have to dig in here and then journey data. I just happen to have it here. Yeah, okay. And how's Mjosa today? Oh, we have. Well, we have headwind. No, 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 we have tailwind. <sighs> okay. Well, at least nice dry weather. Yeah, it's been raining a lot lately. Navigation is pretty nice, you see here? If we type uh, Strandlisha... Now you can even misspell it, you see? Wow, nice. You will see how many percent we will arrive with. But the weird part is... That, well, yeah, okay, close now. The weird part is that once you are navigating, 
then that crucial information is gone. D-U-N. Now, I can't see nowhere where the heck the percent is. <laughs> At least the auto steer is doing a pretty good job. It's probably because it's BMW, you know? German cars, they are it's the best. Wait, wait a minute. I just noticed, if you press here, you can then see how many percent you will arrive with. Oh, I had no idea. Because, you know, in this round screen, there are plenty of places you can uh, click. Uh, can you click here? Oh, okay. But you can click there. Apparently, you can click here to get this phenomenon. You can click again to go back. Yeah, uh, so you just have to know where you're supposed to click. Yeah, but it's not obvious that that spot is possible to click. But now I know. Oh, yeah. All right, consumption was 234 watt hour per kilometer. This is worse than the iX1 and the iX2. Well, okay, if you want the thirstiest car, get a Mini. Let's try 90 test then. Well, this time we cruised at 94 kilometers per hour, and uh, we're gonna go to uh, Rydsagda all the way there and see if we can do a coasting test. Yeah, this car has some switches. There's some manual switches down here uh, just to uh, uh, not make it completely Tesla-like, right? Even though there are lots of controls that is done in the instrument, like in the in the main screen also. So yeah, I also have a car scanner working here, but it doesn't show many variables. I'm still charge. Current seems to be not correct. It's always zero. And then, well, the battery temperature seems to be battery inlet, but at least I get some indication on state of charge and battery temperature. So yeah. And then yeah, I'm gonna show you here. There's a boost button there. <laughs> so if you press the boost button, boom, you get this countdown in the head of the display but also in the main screen so yeah we're just cruising now but this is for boosting uh, past some fossils and humiliate them you only need 10 seconds to humiliate fossils anyway so do it again yeah oh yeah oh, oh yeah finally the sun is here the sky is getting clear so uh, yeah temperature is still uh, 13 degrees celsius but um, yeah we're currently at 156 watt hour per kilometer all right that's okay but, um, I mean, there is just so much space taking up here that doesn't... Well, let me see, can we... Uh, oh, oh, it animates correctly. Uh, okay, okay, that's good, at least. But other than that, this car is kind of useful. Wait, 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 let me check something. Does it also animate at the back? Oh, okay, okay. No, no, it's going to change lane now. Don't do that. Okay. But uh, also, you know, this screen here, let me show you that. I mean, how to waste so much screen space for just showing the same information you could have shown in, in this area? Because the speed can be easily expressed with two or three digits, rather than this arc. Power output here can be expressed there already. And then battery, well, is here. But if you do this, okay. In this screen here, the standard screen, uh, you don't see how many percent battery you have. So you have to go in this screen here to see it there, it's 62%. But also look at the lag here. Okay, okay. Look, look how slow it is. Sometimes I press too fast because I'm like, wait, 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 where's the thing, huh? Wait, no, okay, and oh, it's there, okay, yeah, so. But uh, maybe I'm just used to Tesla, how snappy Tesla is. You know, this car is equipped with a Harman Kardon sound system. How good is it? Let's test it. Nice and clear. Good bass. I can feel the bass in my butt. What's that? The subwoofers, they are actually under each front seat. You can, if you pull forward here, you can see one of the subwoofers there. So also if I would poke behind, um, under here. Well, oh, nice. Missing that extra deepness in the bass, but still overall very good sound. Okay, this time I want to listen to uh, rattling in the mid bass. We will skip a little bit. 
no rattling here because it's a German car. What about deep bass? Ooh. Yeah, nice. Okay, one last thing I have to test is uh, distortion and clipping. Skip, uh, skip a bit on the song here. Okay, here, let's crank up the volume. Okay. Okay, at maximum level, there is uh, distortion in the higher tones, mid-tones, but also clipping in the bass. But overall, sounds very good. I'm not sure how many points I should give it. The, you know the bass, the, the rumbling in the bass in the front seat, sometimes it becomes a bit annoying. I mean, it's nice to get that feel of the music, but maybe not always. Well, I'd probably give this uh, stereo system around 8 out of 10. Okay, let's try the course now. Let's see. Yep, we're neutral. And, well, it doesn't seem to gain much speed though. Uh, maybe we have tailwind even? Okay, there you go. It's coming slowly. So, we want to see now. Uh, Tesla Model 3 Long Range Highline was uh, one of the best, maybe along with the uh, Škoda Enyaq Coupe. But what about uh, a car that is not that efficient? How far will it roll then? Well, you see now, you're going to see the difference. And we have nice weather, 15 degrees Celsius over here, dry road, and even some slight tailwind. You see, we don't hit 120 kilometers per hour, unlike a Tesla. Over here should be a peak speed and then it starts flattening it out or then we lose speed. You can even try to uh, maybe uh, draft slightly behind the truck there before we uh, move over to the left lane. Well, or is it even needed? Uh, well, I was about to say we lose speed, but okay, it's still a slight downhill. Oh, you just have to hunker down behind the truck, the dumpster truck, gain some extra speed here. We just cheat all the way we can now. We have tailwind and we also drive, <laughs> drive behind this truck. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, okay, okay. How, how close do you dare to go? Uh, let's uh, get over here. Oh yeah. Oh oh oh. Well, still gliding, still gliding, huh? Uh oh. Wait, 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 we're supposed to hit. Oh, no, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Yeah, we hit it, 90 over there. Okay, I need to get past the truck, but uh, yeah. That was roughly where the classic Ionic, uh, wait. Yeah, roughly where the classic Ionic uh, had to stop, or I mean not stop, but uh, stop gliding. Maybe before even. So yeah, okay, well, maybe not the worst. You know, tomorrow I'm gonna test Mercedes EQE SUV, but it's the beefiest EQE with uh, what is 43 formatic plus or whatever it's called with 700 horsepower roughly Yeah, we need to see how thirsty that car is in comparison Oh look, I noticed that there's a button here that says experiences When you press it, you will change the mood from core to green vivid and then Timeless, like what? And then it changes, changes the whole theme. We even have a font with serif here. What the heck, man? Huh? Look at this. Oh, they go here. What the heck? This is so weird. <laughs> but also, uh, one of these uh, experiences. Which one was it again? Personal balance. What is balance? One of these activated the massage. Here, yeah, here. So whoa, whoa, whoa. the seat is massaging me. What? So then I scroll down and I found that uh, under uh, seat comfort, well, this car has massage. Ooh, okay. It might not have pelvic rotation, but it still has some massage. Result from a 90 test: 166 watt hour per kilometer. That is also the worst 
uh, versus the iX1 and iX2. And the distance was, was reported as 182.5, so it's slightly over-reporting. Okay, now I'm gonna test some ion charging. So I'm gonna show you something weird here. Look how low the voltage is. At 19% the charge is only 287. This is charging voltage, not resting voltage. So these battery packs, just like iX1, iX2, they have really low voltage, which means that if you go to one of those classic 50 kilowatt chargers with only um, 125 amp limit, uh, well, you can do the math. You get uh, three times uh, uh, like uh, 35 kilowatt only. <laughs> But uh, yeah, at least now if we're, when we are at Ionity, we get 126 kilowatt. This is uh, roughly on uh, par with spec. It doesn't go that fast. Since this uses the same battery as the iX1, iX2, then I don't have to measure the whole battery. We know it's 62 kilowatt hour net capacity. And then based on that, we get only 373 kilometers of range. Ugh. Well, the efficiency is not the best uh, and uh, battery size is also not the best. So. Yeah, it is kind of poor range for this price range. So uh, you probably buy this Mini for other reasons than range and efficiency. And then, well, we should also maybe confirm to see if the 1000 km challenge on the Mini is slower than iX1, iX2 then, yeah. Okay, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.